our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit we always believe. And with your spirit. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Very happy to continue our reflection and contemplation of the mystery of incarnation. With the certainty that God has become one of us, He has risen and He's walked with us every day, every time. And the human race are, are, is called for its fulfillment. We meditate and pray that we may be brought to that fulfillment ourselves in the holiness. Today we want to offer this mass for the intention of Maria Aurelia Garcia, her, her host, and also we want to pray for our brother Jose Luis Aguilar, who passed yesterday. We want to pray for the family and their consolation and embrace our brothers and sisters who are struggling to this pandemia, that God may give them strength and strengthen their families. Let us acknowledge our sins and pray for God's mercy. Lord, had mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, had mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, had mercy. And Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and check us with a lasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care. O oh Lord, we pray, they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. We ask you this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. A reading from the beginning of the first book of Samuel. There was a certain man from Ramathame. Elkanah by name, a Zuphite from the hill country of Ephraim. He was a son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuph. An Aramite, he had two wives, one named Hannah and the other Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah was childless. This man regularly went out, went on pilgrimage from his city to worship the Lord of hosts and to sacrifice to him at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Pinehas, were ministering as priests of the Lord. When the day came for Elkanah to offer sacrifice, he used to give a portion of his wife Peninnah, and to all her sons and daughters, but a double portion to Hannah because he loved her. Though the Lord had made her barren, her rival, to upset her, turned it into a constant reproach to her that the Lord had left her barren. This went on year after year. Each time they made their pilgrimage to the sanctuary of the Lord, Peninnah would approach her, and Hannah would weep and refuse to eat. Her husband, Elkanah, used to ask her, Hannah, why do you weep, and why do you refuse to eat? Why do you grieve? Am I not more to you than ten sons? The word of the Lord. Be to, God. to you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. 
precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they left their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called to them. So they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Christmas is not limited to one day. Epiphany is not limited <clears throat> to one week. Our church constantly through history has been in a constant awareness of the manifestation of God in our midst, in our history, in human life. The Gospel of Mark calls us today The Lord calling his disciples as he has come from the desert and defined in heart and awareness what his mission is. Mark, in today's first day of the first week of in ordinary time, calls us to full awareness that time of fulfillment is now that God has a plan, and with the right time, in the right conditions, our gather, God acts. God does something. And at this time of, uh, of fulfillment, a light shines bright in territory where there are unfaithful where darkness is taking over and light shines through the presence of God himself. God reaches out to enlighten human life and calls upon awareness that now is the right time to make the right move, and that is change. When God is present, there's no way that we may continue being and doing the same thing. 
When God is present, God recreates, changes, renews. That is why that when we truly pray in true spirit and in true heart, we get out from that prayer the same way as we started praying, something happened to your prayer. Because there's no way that as we pray, which means communication in relation to our God, there's no way that as we are closer to our God, that we may just walk out of prayer the same way we started. And if that is your case, there's something wrong with your prayer. You get up from your prayer with resentments, with bitterness, holding things in your heart, feeling slave into your, your, your emotions, with your fixed mind, then something's wrong with your prayer and something's wrong with your heart. There's no way that we can meet God and leave being the same person. There's no way. In the first reading from the book of Samuel, we hear Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel. In a very difficult circumstances for, for a woman in this time, it's very shameful and humiliating not to bear a son, not to have family. And we see these contrasts, two wives, one that has a lot of kids and one that doesn't. And like I always tell you, the scripture will always put for us two situations that contrast with one another to be able to present us a truth, something that we need to grasp and something that we need to uphold. The one that bears children is full of pride, with a heart far from God, unmerciful, unkind, unmindful of the pain and suffering that the other woman is having. And we have to look at this attitude because sometimes we act in this way. When we feel that we have everything we need and abundance is in our door, we forget about those who have nothing. We forget about those who strive every day and every time to get what they need. Being closer to God, who's one of his qualities, in addition to being loving and caring, it's providing. And we don't see right here this woman with lots of children providing comfort, providing hope, providing support. In addition to the humiliation and grief of Hannah, this woman contributes in making her pain harder, in making her suffer more. What an ugly attitude. And sometimes we fall into that, in pointing out fingers to others, in emphasizing their shortcomings, there are mistakes like if we were perfect people. And as the story rolls on, we see Anna grieving and striving. And that's another thing that we need to look at. Because these two people are going to bring to us the good news of God. Anna is also falling into her own suffering, pain, and humiliation. 
She's just looking at herself as a barren woman. She's being driven by her shame. And yes, she's asking for a son that she may feel better, that she may feel good, that she may be reinstated to a level of dignity. A prayer that's very selfish. So we see this, two, this narrative that shows two attitudes, two kind of behaviors that are both ungodly. Neither one foresee the plan of God. Neither one consider the covenant that God has given to his people of Israel. Neither one are able to go beyond their own self-centeredness. They're both worried about their pride, their self-interest, and they're not understanding that under that situation, even as critical as it is, God has a plan. God is doing something. And Anna would be praying and crying every time she would go to the temple and offer sacrifices that she needs a son. And she wants a son that she can be comforted. What is Hannah missing? It's very different to ask God, give me a son so I can be dignified. God, give me a son so I can be accepted in my social realm. God, give me a son so I won't feel humiliated. Point out to. I want to change this prayer. What would be the ideal to make this situation godly driven? Lord, if it is your will for me and to the glory of your name not to have children, I will live in such a way that I would have them and live with the joy that life is great. That you have given me a great husband. And we hear this from the narrative where her husband tells us, Anna, I love you. Isn't my love, my care, my tenderness greater than 10 sons? And she doesn't see it because she's just looking at herself. And I'll continue with my own version of what that ideal prayer would be. Lord, if you decide to give me a son any time whenever you want to, I will dedicate that son to you. And I will continue serving you and ministering you. I will have that joy of salvation in your covenant with a son or without a son. That would be the perspective of a faithful person. That would be that true prayer of a person who knows her God or his God. And as we go along, we will see that a priest will go and talk to Hannah, thinking that she's drunk for the way she's crying and mourning. And the priest, Levi, will tell her, go home and may God bless you. That's it. Those words were so comforting to Anna that the next year she comes, she has a baby. And that's the prophet Daniel that would bring good tidings and strength to the people of Israel. Imagine, the other women had many children, none of them chosen to lead God's people. This woman, barren, like Elizabeth, 
bears a son at the time of fulfillment, at the right time. And God does great things for this boy. Because the story goes that she returns to the temple and she gives her son to Levi, the priest. She doesn't even take him. She has been relieved of her affliction. Yes, God will take that to go forward on his plan of salvation. But we know that Anna could have done more. I think the beauty of this narrative is not just a story of one woman who's happy with children and another woman who's grieving for being barren. That's not the point. The stories in the Bible will always tell us in a story form a situation to let us know what's the truth behind this narrative. There are things that you cannot just say in one or two words. You just have to tell the story, and within the story, you'll need to understand what's the truth that that story is giving you. And that's what we have here in today's first reading. So what is the calling for us today? As we have seven weeks before we reach Ash Wednesday and begin our Lenten season, seven weeks to reflect, to act upon this, to open up, because at the end, from the starting of the first day of this liturgical year, on the first Sunday of Advent, the readings, the Word of God, has been emphasizing change, metanoia, change from within. And change from within on metanoia style means be truthful, embed yourself of all the layers that you have put on yourself. This Christmas has been a true call for us to be authentic, original, to be in reality and truthfully who we are. And I'm best with all our presumptions, pride, or whatever we have put on top, we present to the Lord with humility, with openness, with his position to do God's will. And say, Lord, you don't desire sacrifices or prayers, but you give me a body to serve you. I'm here to do your will. Words of the letter to the Hebrews, reflecting Christ and reflecting us. Here I am. Lord, to do your will, to be transformed by you, to be more like you, to be more Christ-like. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that God may give us his grace, that we may trust in his mercy, that we may trust that he's in charge and he's taking his salvation plan in humanity in the right time when this fulfillment comes. For the church, may the Lord bless.
and purify our hearts for the coming of the fullness of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those in public office, may God empower them in leading with integrity, protecting all life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. For women who have suffered miscarriage and for all, couple, all couples who bear the cross of infertility, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may the Lord deepen our knowledge of his love as we embrace the season of ordinary time. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may they rejoice as God reveals and for the repose of the soul of Maria Aurelia Garcia. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For the petitions in our book of petitions and for those petitions we hold in the quiet of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Let us also pray for the repose of the soul of our brother Jose Luis Aguilera. We pray to the Lord. Loving Lord, I mean, God, we entrust our prayers and petitions to your loving and merciful heart, that you may answer in according to your holy will. We ask you this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, God, our creation. Even as we have this bread to offer for the earth and work of human hands, blessed we come for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, God, of our creation. Even as we have this wine to offer for fruit of the vine and work of human hands, blessed so we come for us our spiritual drink. Receive, O oh Lord, the sacrifice that may be acceptable to you, Almighty Father. And purify me, Lord, for my sins, that I may celebrate these sacred ministries with dignity of heart. Pray with me, brothers and sisters, that these are sacrifices may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Pray, 
for the good and the good of all the church. Amen. May your people's offering, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that you may restore them to holiness and obtain them by the devoted entreat through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just a duty in salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, most holy Father of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern things in harmony. You gave us this same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He's the way that leads us to you, the truth that set us free, in the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women who you made to the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, Lord, and to be glorified. You who loves the human race and always walks with us in the union of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we're gathered by his love, and when, as one for his disciples, and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread on this Paschal feast table. Therefore, most holy Father, Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts to make them holy. So may be gone for us in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Those men and women he called to serve the kingdom and for the glory of God the Father. He took bread, gave, gave them thanks and praise, broke it and gave it to them and said, take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body that will be given up for you. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith. Savior of the world, by your cross and resurrection. You have set us free. Amen. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, 
whom you led to his passion and dead on the cross to the glory of resurrection, in whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim your work until your son comes again, and we offer you this bread of life and each challenge of our eternal blessing. Look with favor on the blessing of your church in which we show for the Paschal sacrifice that your son has handed over to us. And grant us that by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may be always contact among the members of your Son until eternity. Father most holy, by our partaking of this mystery, give us life through your Holy Spirit and grant us that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us always in bond of communion together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, Ramon and John, his assistant bishops, and all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your holy people gather here. Grant us all the faithful of your church, look into the signs of times by the latter faith, that we may devote ourselves to the service of your kingdom in preaching your gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that by sharing our griefs and pains, our joys and hopes, that we may faithfully bring our brothers and sisters, to the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Father in heaven, we entrust our brothers, Ana Maria Aurelia Garcia and Jose Luis Aguilar, and all those whose faith you have only known, admit them to rejoice into the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant us also when our earthly pilgrimage is being completed that we may go to your eternal home in company of the angels. The Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her Joseph, her spouse, the Martyrs, the saints, St. Francis of Assisi and St. Clair, and all the saints that we should praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Faithful to the Lord's command and his teachings, in union of mind and heart and spirit, as children of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And leave us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you, Mijo. Let us offer each other that sign of peace. Thank you, God bless you too, Mijo.
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we for being called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ take us to everlasting life. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those who are renewed with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Let us encommend our brother Luis, Jose Luis, to our loving God. Father in heaven, we entrust the soul of our brother Jose Luis Aguilar, who served you in this world as he was passing through. May he rest in peace in your heavenly home. And us who are here on earth may be consoled by the words of faith and strengthened by the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you this in the name of he who lives and reigns forever and ever. May he rest in peace. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, more full of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now. May he rest in peace and the light of Christ shine upon him. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And may God bless you and protect you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your lives. Amen. Starting this Monday, we'll be having, uh, we'll be open the office and also the church. We, we already have a new office hours, so today we'll be open at the office from 9 to 5, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to 7 p.m., and Friday from 9 to 5, and Saturday from 8 to 12. Hope we can serve you better than we're serving you now. Have a wonderful day, and please, let's keep each other in our prayers.